The Radeon R7 360 was a lower tier mid-range GPU released at a time where GPUs were, in my opinion, designed far better than they are nowadays. Before looking at its performance and specs, I want to touch on the general build quality of this GPU. So for example, this $110 GPU has 4 display outputs, if we look at a modern day offering. It's a lot more expensive, like a 6500 XT, we can see only two outputs, like a laptop GPU would have. Not to talk about the ability of the older card to record gameplay, something the modern day GPU is missing, and the list can certainly be extended by a few more parameters. But enough of that for now, let's take a look at the card's specs. With only 2GB of memory, the card seems more than obsolete for today's standards. And something not really visible at first sight, maybe the missing driver support, which ended about two years ago. So with such obstacles in the way, can this once pretty appealing GPU handle anything remotely modern in terms of gaming? Well, let's jump into some benchmarks and see what's left in this card for 2023. The Witcher 3 in its remastered edition runs quite well on the R7 360, with a lot of reduction in visual quality. But on the other hand, it's just a few FPS shy of an average of 30 at 1080p. That's somewhat impressive for a card like the R7 360, as it seems, anything between 720 and 1080p is good enough for this card to run The Witcher 3's Remastered Edition. Another quite impressive showing of the Radeon card is Dying Light 2. Of course, turning down the settings is inevitable, but on the other hand, you've got to remember that the card doesn't even have drivers for this game, pretty much any game of today's list, so even at a very low preset, with 720p, a consistent average of over 30 FPS is more than enough for this GPU. Despite all the praise we can give to this card for doing as well as it does, we need to draw the line somewhere to see what's playable and what's not. So Cyberpunk definitely runs alright, the visual quality is, to say the least, not the best. With the usage of FSR and the lowest preset with 720p, the game becomes so much pixelated. Using higher settings is pretty much impossible, so you need to stick with this. For some, this may be playable, but for me, that's not the case. Returning to some easier titles to run for this card, Overwatch 2 is a perfect fit for this GPU. With a great 3-digit average and a resolution of 1080p, can't really complain. The likes of Valorant and CSGO should run equally well, and like many of these older cards that are decently powerful, the esports titles can be a pretty nice fit for them. Days Gone runs pretty well on a wide range of hardware, and the R7 does a decent job of producing excellent frame rates at 720p, and of course, the low preset. Obviously, when I say excellent results, it's kind of aimed at this specific scenario. It's certainly not perfect playing at 720p in 2023, but considering the GPU, those are excellent results. Another pretty nice surprise came when testing Atomic Heart. With a nice average of close to 50 FPS, the GPU doesn't disappoint. Once again, the visuals are tuned in a way which is the only one where the GPU can do as well as it does, providing once again FPS that I think not many would expect from such a GPU in such a demanding game. And of course, you have the ability to turn on FSR, but in my opinion, it's not really necessary. Speaking of demanding games, the Resident Evil 4 Remake certainly is one of those. Ultimately, it has become too much for the GPU to handle, as you can tell by the footage. The FPS ranges from 20 to 50 from time to time, making it a not so consistent experience, hardly recommendable to play in the way it performs. At the end, it would be too much to ask for from this 8 year old GPU. After all testing done, I'm generally impressed with the GPU. For sure, it didn't set any records with its performance, but for what it was and what it is, it's an excellent GPU. And not to forget, it's missing driver support. Something like that can be a big obstacle. Ultimately, for the 20 bucks I paid for it, it can be a decent GPU aimed at esports titles, road or games. But even at such a low price, it's hard to recommend. And you see the likes of the Polaris based GPUs like the 4 GB RX 580 selling for as little as $45. Thanks for joining me on this GPU review. Hopefully, in the next one, you can see what the $45 RX 580 can offer in 2023. Make sure to subscribe for that.